Hello everyone, this is David, and this is Ellie. I uh, decided to do a video today. Um, and today, we're going to be going over The Hunger Games, Chapter 11. Alright. Um, this, this chapter has not really a lot to analyze. Not really a lot of, you know, foreshadowing or whatever. But, there's a shitload of th action-packed things in here. And this is where, if you like action, your eyes will be glued to this chapter because you will not want to pretty much after chapter 11 I've read up to chapter 15 okay I couldn't help myself it was that intense you know you just don't want to turn away so chapter 11 are you ready? I'm ready All right so um <laughs> are you okay? do you have a hairball? I have a hairball I'm, I'm throwing up catnip okay um okay so <laughs> <laughs> no, don't stop yes. it. No, it's okay. It's okay. Continue. I can't continue. Yes, you can. Okay, so let me ask you your thoughts. What would you be feeling in the 60 seconds that it takes uh, for, and for those that don't know, uh, basically Katniss right now, uh, you rise up in a tube and you sit there for 60 seconds and then the gong rings then you basically go out, do your thing, kill each other, whatever, run away. So how would you feel in that 60 seconds? I feel pretty scared. Pretty scared. I wouldn't know what to do. I'd be, you know, looking around, evaluating everything, like where I can run to, who's standing next to me, finding Peter's eyes so I can look into them, and uh, look at his ashy blonde hair. <laughs> um, what about you? Yeah, I'd be shitting my pants. But uh, the thing is, though, um, this is where it gets interesting that kind of you start my thinking. Um, the what's it called? The cornucopia. Yes. Uh, the cornucopia is a giant horn uh, that's in the middle, and there's supplies inside of it, and then there's more supplies around it. The farther away it is from it, the less valuable the supplies are. So, it's kind of cool uh, how that's set up. So you know you can risk it and go in the middle, and you know ri risk death, or you can kind of just take something and just run and try and do your best later. What do you think about that system? I think that's a good system. Um, although, like you said when we were reading it, the bow and arrows that the game makers obviously know she's really good at is somewhere, it's like not in the center. It's somewhere like really easy to get. And that doesn't make sense. Well, it's not in the, it's on the very outskirts, but it's somewhere where it's somewhat close to it. Because if you think about it, if you put a long range weapon away from the cornucopia, it's kind of not fair. Yeah. You know, because then you could just grab it, pick people off. And then that's that. That's terrible logic. I wonder, like, if the if in the center of the cornucopia they have something that would just take out everybody instantly. Like you get to the very center, and then there's like a bulletproof vest and a laser gun. I, I don't think that that'd be kind of boring. But yeah. uh, if this is kind of broken because basically the strongest person's gonna win the cornucopia. You know what I'm saying? Like it's gonna be basically the career tributes are gonna make it to the middle. I mean, they're the biggest, toughest dudes. I like, guarantee a little kid and Rue aren't gonna be able to like fight against those dudes um so and that's that um but let's talk about more about this stuff uh um so yeah she does spot the bone arrow and that's why she wants to go get it and then she notices Peta and how Peta kind of was kind of reminding her with his eyes that you know don't go for the middle you know go for the bone don't go for the bone just you know run Find some water, run, maybe grab some outer supplies. I don't know if he said that or not. I don't think he actually even said that. But um, you know, she was she was tempted. Going there. I would be too though. That would keep her alive for a lot longer than uh, you know, she could without it, maybe. Yeah, it makes sense to go for it. I mean you're gonna die anyway, you might as well have a fighting chance. Probably gonna die anyway. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. I just see I wouldn't risk it. I wouldn't risk it. If anything, I'd kind of sit back and see who gets the bow and arrow follow them. <laughs> That'd probably be easier than actually going for it right away. Maybe. 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 So anyway, let's talk about the intense shit that happened. So anyway, she blames PETA, of course, for, you know, him staring at her trying to keep her alive. Figures. Well, um, how does staring at her keep her alive? Kind of like saying, hey, don't risk your life for that shit. It just gets her panties wet. That's how <sighs> it does. Okay. So... Let me just talk about how what happens to you. So, dude from dish, so she's running. She decides not to go for the bow. 
she goes for like just a regular pack on the outskirts and just is gonna run into the woods and the same dude the same uh, this other dude at the same time runs into her and he just coughs up blood right all over her face and you know it's kind of like oh shit what was that you know and then he got stabbed in the back and then she's running she's hauling ass and then this girl uh the girl from district two has like these uh throwing knives and she's throwing them at katniss and you know she said she, she could hear the whistling of the knife coming towards her and she pulled the backpack over her head to kind of like protect her but what would, how would you feel in that moment where you hear a knife and then you know that this girl doesn't miss and you know and then that knife is coming towards the back of your head how would you feel actually i don't think i'd feel scared i would just be like oh i might die soon i mean maybe someone who um gets scared from like things that are worthy of getting scared of but yeah that seems like it'd be pretty scary i like katniss's reactions though she seems like a very practical person yeah she's very practical and logical inside the hunger games i don't know what happened maybe she's just always been the hunger games well <laughs> oh okay yeah yeah that's right she shouldn't be in relationships she should just be in like the hunger games yeah her decision making is actually very excellent I'm kind of, I kind of wanted to do like my first opinion reaction of each chapter when I review this, only because like I didn't want to like read four chapters ahead, and then kind of have a biased opinion. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because at the time when I read this, I was like, damn, fucking hey, Katniss is being badass. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, I mean, she does get badass later. I guess that's not really a spoiler. It could be. Um, so, but I'm gonna not gonna like, read any more until I get up to where I was. But anyway, uh, so anyway, after that, I have to say that she should have actually aimed for her legs when she threw the knife. I think that would have been more effective. Like I told you, you know, if you hit the legs, she would have gone down, and you don't even have to go finish her off. She'll be sitting there on the ground, probably like, oh shit, there's a fucking knife in my leg, and she's gonna be bleeding out. You know, maybe not bleeding out, but she'll be kind of wounded. She can go back, throw some knives in the middle, kill some of the dudes in the middle, and then, I mean, I don't know. To me, that'd be good. Yeah, that'd be more efficient. She'd probably be bleeding out if she got cut. And that, I wouldn't say bleeding out, but she'd be kind of, and she wouldn't be up, she wouldn't be running around, she wouldn't make it far. So you could, you, after you deal with the middle, you can go back and kill her. Yeah. I actually think she dies, though. No, she doesn't die. I, I actually write, I wrote down a little list, and I'll share who's alive and who's not alive at the end of this. Okay, so at the end of the, you know, this little beginning thing. No, at the end, or whatever. Um, I can hear the bl- okay, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm just reading out loud. Sorry about that. It's not okay. Um, so, yeah, and then... So, apparently, 11 people died. Or 11 kids died. And there was... Kids, you're, you're making it sound... You're making the audience have more compassion for them by calling them kids. Innocent children. <laughs> that would never do anything. You wouldn't kill an innocent child. Okay, so there's uh, 13 left. And, obviously... Um, the ones that died... Or the District 9, the one that reached for it. Um, and it's actually kind of interesting. They show the dead images in the sky. I wonder how they do that. Some kind of projection. So that's kind of interesting. And it doesn't tell you how they die. Because that would kind of give away the other person's skill. Yeah, yeah. So it's kind of cool seeing how it feels. And I love how she's like, wait, is Peter dead? I don't know. Is he dead? Like, she's like, oh, no, no. Fuck, fuck Peter. I hope he dies. But is he dead? I, don't, I mean, oh, I, uh... <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, I love how she's like having this inner battle with like how she obviously has a gun for Peter and so Gail. Cute. And Cena. It's not cute. It's so cute. Okay. But uh what's it called? Um, and also horns uh blow whenever a death has occurred and it's basically after so that's how you know someone died. Which is kinda weird. It reminds me of uh Lord of the Flies. Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, hmm, okay, okay. There's a lot of that in this. Um, a thing that happened in here, I don't, I don't know if you agree with this, uh, but first, isn't it interesting that the capital feeds people, like, the best meals, right? Like, the meals that were just perfect and, like, you know, okay, they feed you like really high class meals, and people that come from District 12, District 11, and all these other poor districts, they're not used to those fancy meals. So, whenever they have this kind of fancy meal and they go into the wilderness, they're gonna like go on the wild and be like, wow, you know, all this 
Now, I know at first I was used to having nothing, but now it's like even worse. Because, you know, gave something. So I wanted to do that on purpose. Like, I understand that it's not maybe... It's, it's one of those happy accidents. Yes. <laughs> for them, anyway. Maybe. Maybe. If it's not, it's a really cool coincidence for the capital. But maybe they just, like... The capital people just don't know what bad food is. They're like, oh, well, if you're hungry, you have to have a five-star meal. Maybe it doesn't even occur to them that, like, you can have shitty food. Maybe not to the people, but to the people in charge, I would think so. Oh, me. Yeah, it's true. Although, I have to say it might be worse for the careers because they've never had food. And, like, you know how Katniss chews on some bark? Wait, is that in this chapter? It doesn't matter. Well, anyways, the careers wouldn't know to do that. Yeah, that's true, the careers. But then again, they're probably trained, even though they're not supposed to, you know, how to deal with that shit. Oh. Like, deal in the wilderness, you know, something like that. Mm -hmm. um, pretty cool, though. The landscape is basically this. There's... You got the middle here, you know, there's like a, you know, if I were to describe it, you know, maybe something like, a, like this, this would be where they go, right? And then maybe like the lake would be over here, there's a giant lake, and the rest is kind of like forest, like where this, the tidal would be, and then this is like where a cliff drops off, kind of thing. So that's kind of the landscape. So the lake would be the obvious choice for water, however, I mean, it's kind of like in plain sight, you know, you go there, people are probably going to try and take you out, there's going to be traps around there. So... The career tributes, as she said, are obviously guarding that. So that's kind of how I think the career tributes live, is because they don't really actually that you know they probably don't even have to learn how to hunt and all that stuff because some of the landscapes are probably is like a giant source of water, or a giant source of this, but it'd be kind of like suicide to go there unless you were like really strong. And I'm pretty sure that um, they we learned that they joined they form an alliance, the careers. So that's how you know they can probably deal with not starving to death. That's probably what they do that anyway in, in the, uh, the capital. I was imagining why they would do that. It's probably to keep people from, um, you know, it's not boring. You know, you want the career tributes to fight. You really don't care about, you know, the stupid little boy or the I stupid guess. little girl, you know. They're like, they're like, um, for entertainment when you don't have anything big going on. And so this brings me to my question, mm -hmm. naturally. If you were in a landscape where there was no way to hunt food, it was just like, I don't know. Um, like a giant ice thing and your only source of food was a dead tribute <laughs> would you eat it? no I wouldn't resort to cannibalism would you? Well, you you'd be turned on would you? <laughs> yes <laughs> yes would I be an amazing atheist? well uh no because I figured they'd probably take the body up before I could make my decision and oh yeah cause all right, I'd, ha I'd have to be like what? Oh. Uh, yeah. See, that was the thing about what I'm talking about. We did read a little bit into, um, uh, the chapters. So we're up to chapter four. This isn't a spoiler or anything. I mean, it happens, like, in the next chapter. Basically, with the dead bodies, they go out and get them, obviously. They don't just leave them there. Because I remember one time they talked about this dude, Titan, that, like I said, you know, went around and ate the people he killed. So it's kind of like they're getting the corpses and stuff like that. That's sexy. All right, so remember, this is just chapter 11. Okay. Okay. All right. Attempted to read more. Okay, so, and let me talk about her little uh, her little sport setup. She Basically, she has a, sleep, a sleeping bag, and she ties a belt around herself, and she's hiding out in a tree. That's going to be pretty cool. You know, I, I, that's pretty badass that she invented something like that. I, I thought that maybe a sleeping bag in a tree would kind of stick out, but I guess, you know, you, when you're walking through the woods, you're not going to be looking up in the sky. You know, you're probably going to be looking around for, like, fires or, like, signs of, like, footprints and stuff. Yeah, it's pretty smart of her to do that. And at night, yeah, I doubt you're ever going to see something like that. Um, so then we talk, then we see the, the pack of careers. Uh, the, the first career that we see is a girl from District 3. Um, and then both from 1 and 2. Uh, oh, actually, these, this isn't actually the, um, the, um, Alliance, I'm sorry. Uh, these are just the people that are alive. Um, I'll actually probably put it in the description, as opposed to saying it, because I'll probably cop, uh, talk over myself. So, um, she's happy that Pete is alive. And she, I love how she has conflicting emotions, like I said. Um, and then she's worried about Rue, too. And I really hope, you know, 
I can't wait for Rue and Katniss to team up. I know they're going to team up, definitely. It's not because I read anything, anything like that. It's just that's something that I really want to happen. Katniss and Rue. I think they, because I, I think that'd be a cool relationship. Um, so, and then also, uh, okay, so, uh, okay, okay. All right, so yes, yes, yes. The people, the careers are banding together and they're going to hunt down the weak and they're probably going to fight each other, of course. Um, it's kind of funny, but so basically they, she falls asleep, right? She's looking for water. She can't find it. And the career tributes find her and start chasing her. And she uh, she goes up into a tree. Oh, no, she doesn't go up into a tree. She was in the sleeping bag. Yeah. She, she was in the sleeping bag. And then uh, there was somebody, I guess, around that she could see that was like had the fire going. Basically, they were just stupid. Like, they were being very dumb. And then the career tributes ran out and just murdered, uh, murdered the kid unfortunately um and then they walk near Katniss and then they say something pretty we see something very very interesting we see PETA with the careers and PETA's the one that apparently uh, killed the girl so our boy I'm not sure if it was girl it was or a boy girl. it was a girl so I was hoping they would rape her that would be, like, random and awesome. I mean, they're already evil. That would just make them even more evil. Uh, okay. Uh, why, do you, why do you assume they're evil? Well, you, like, kind of have... When they talk about the careers, they're, like, described as snotty kids who get all these advantages, and they they actually like the concept of the game, so... So, you're not rooting for them? Okay. You know what, you know what I think would be cool... And that, that's it for the chapter, and that's the cliffhanger we left off on. But, something really, I think, would be great for the movie. They need to do every single goddamn scene in this movie. But another thing they really need to do is add some, like, crazy German metal while, um... Yeah, what? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it's boring. I'm not saying German metal is boring. It's just, like, <laughs> two in the morning. Okay, yes, but they should add some, like, you know, like, really crazy music, intense music when the, uh, the, the first 60 seconds of the Hunger Games begins, when it's just crazy murder left and right. Like, it's, I, I would love to see, it's like I want to see murder, but I think that'd be a really intense scene, like, just watching just death and bodies drop, and it just shows how intense the Hunger Games, like, you know, at first you're like, oh, the Hunger Games, basically, you just camp out, you find people, you take them out, <laughs> but, like, the first six is just, like, death. You know, like back to back, so that's crazy. It might just be quiet though. I can see them doing drums or heartbeat, and then, and then they fall into silence. And you're like, oh my god. Do you, do you know what I mean? Those scenes. All right, so they, that was our first uh, video for you, and um, hopefully it's a little more interesting than the pictures. And it actually saves me the trouble of actually looking oh, up pictures yeah, on Google yeah, yeah. and. Fucking always look at spoilers, accidentally, because stupid pictures give away everything. Um. Anyway, yeah. Next chapter is gonna be chapter twelve, and it's gonna be even more intense. So look forward to that. All right. Good one. Have a good one. Anything to say? <laughs> no. <laughs>